Hi and welcome to Web Design. This is Mrs. Bratcher and in this lesson we're going to learn various techniques for adding a background whether it be a background image, background color, and how to position that image or even attach it and fix it in place so that you can move your text around and that image stays fixed. Step one is we are going to start by using something called shorthand. So on our background page you can just add an internal style sheet for each of these and you want to start with the body selector because we're going to apply it to the whole page and then at that point our property will just be background and we can add all of our different values in so we would want a different value here using the hexadecimal reference then we're going to give a path to our image remember we always want to put our images in the closest folder to our file so I have an images folder inside of my backgrounds folder so I would do images slash and if you can't remember what you named the image you can move over to the file pane and I see that I named my image back one so up here I would just type back one.jpg and you position it top left top right and then this particular one I believe I asked you to position at top right. If you don't want it to repeat we'll say no repeat. By default images repeat left and right and then we're going to fix it in place. I'm going to add a semicolon here, close off the curly brace and that you'll notice over here that all using one property I was able to add a background color, a background image and positioning. To add some more effect to your page, you can set an image as a background. It's better if your image is something subtle where people can still see what's going on on your page. Uh, you can make full size images or smaller images. Keep in mind that the larger the image, the longer the load time will be. And we're just going to use background hyphen image as our property. And then you give the path to the image. So let's go try that out. So I'm going to go into my internal style sheet. I have a new page called image.html and I'm going to start by doing background hyphen image and then I want to give it a path to the image. You can browse for those images. And in my backgrounds folder is where I'll locate my image. Close it off with a semicolon and you'll notice that by default this image repeated X and Y and it's kind of distracting you'll notice with the text on top of it so what I'd like you all to do is lower the opacity of the image in Photoshop or you can use CSS to lower the opacity of an image in Photoshop all you need to do is unlock the background of that image once you've done that the opacity lights up and you just drag the bar down until it is the level that you want it to be and then save. Alright you still have your image in there and one thing I did was I told it not to repeat. Background repeats the property, no repeats the value and now I just have one picture instead of a multiples. Now we're going to do something called background attachment and we're going to tell it that we want it to be fixed and what that'll do is kind of like glue it in place so that if we keep scrolling this image is going to stay put no matter how far we scroll so that you can tell what this looks like we are going to insert some text and it might even be better to have a larger picture that fills the page so you can really get a better idea of what it looks like so to fill the page go ahead and throw a p tag in here and we're going to paste some text in go online and find some information that discusses background attachments and copy it and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and that's not enough information so what you can do is you can just keep pasting inside of that p tag over and over again until you get enough information where you would have to scroll. Now let's go check out what this looks like by previewing the page. I hit F12. I still don't have enough text so I'm going to have to go back and add some more. We'll head back to our preview, refresh the page. 
Now you should be able to tell that when I scroll up, the heading goes away, but my picture stays put. Normally that picture would move with that heading, so that's background attachment fixed. All right, in this one we're going to learn how to use background color. We're not going to use shorthand though. We're going to use the property background color. Then we're going to use the hexadecimal reference. Down here below, I'd like for you all to look up information about hexadecimal reference codes and explain how they work. Now we're going to learn about positioning. You can position an image to the top left, right, center, bottom. You can even give the coordinates, so what percent X and what percent Y. So X is right and left, Y is up and down. So we're going to go back and we're going to create a page called Position. We're going to have our background image in there, but I don't want it repeating because I want to be able to tell that I've got it positioned. So I'm going to go up here and tell it background repeat, no repeat, and now we can position it. And this is where you need to tell it, do you want it to be in the top, the bottom, the right? And in this particular one, I ask you to position it in the top right. And you want a picture that's about 500 by 500, minus 200. So I'm going to type top, then right. And you'll notice that it moves over to the top right. Next example, we're going to position the background in the center. And instead of top right, we would tell it center. And then instead of right, center. And it moves into the dead center of the page. By default, a page re background image repeats X and Y. So that's left and right and up and down. So we're going to create a page called repeat X and we want to make the image repeat X which is left and right. So instead of no repeat, we want to say repeat X and you'll notice that it repeats across the top. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make one of them a repeat Y and just change the title of that page. And that is the end of backgrounds. If you have any questions, please contact me or ask me.